What is up guys, Krautmouse here, back with another Call of Duty commentary. Today we are on Hotel, and we are playing a game of Domination. Uh, I know you guys don't usually see me play a lot of objective game types, um, well, other than Headquarters, which is probably my favourite game type of Call of Duty in all and all, but um, yeah, I had a good game, I feel. Uh, actually, I had a fucking awful start in this game, but... Um, I pulled it together and I did my bit to secure the victory, so um, I feel like I should um, show this gameplay. But um, the gameplay isn't too important because one of the main things I want to talk about today is um, I want to have a continuation of the origins of editing. And um, last time we talked a lot about um, Edwin Porter and uh, the very start of editing, the um, invention as it were. And um, I know, I realise watching that video back that I left out the Lumiere brothers who were also a very important start in the um, French side of the origins of films. But um, I just want to make it clear that they did have a very important role and any of you students of media out there researching Porter also need to research the Lumiere brothers um, because they have, they contributed a lot even if um, in some instances they were very pessimistic but um, yeah that's none nonetheless today I want to talk about um, D.W. Griffith who was a very great um, director who worked roughly 10 years after Porter and um, Griffith did a lot to progress the film uh, conventions or progress film as an art form to what it is today and um, Probably the most notable um, contribution that Griffith made uh, in modern day cinema, or whatever it is, is the invention of the close up, or not the invention, but the first use of the close up. Um, Griffith was the first man to do that, and um, at the time it was a really radical thing and it shook up the cinema. I mean, I think the quote is something like. The producers hated it because they wanted to pay. They were paying the actors for the full bodies, and they didn't want to see like the faces. And um, you know, they they didn't understand what was going on and what was happening. Why you were looking at this big face of someone? And um, obviously, they were just worried about the audience's interpretations of it all. And um, it turned out the audiences just responded to it fine, and um, they totally understood what was going on. So. Um, D.W. Griffith uh, invented the close-up is one of the great things that I should start off by saying but um, he also did um, a lot of other conventions which um, is very important to talk about one the main one of which was that he was probably the first director to um, use his editors as collaborative partners rather than hands for hire I mean the editing process of a film is probably the most important part in some senses. Obviously, there's you can argue that what's the most important part of a car? Obviously, everything needs to be working in conjunction with each other to make it work successfully. But um, editing is a very important um, step in the filmmaking process. And, um, you know, it's where the film is made, essentially, because um, you shoot everything... The way you should think about it is that over 200 hours is probably filmed during the on-set portion or the production phase of a film. Uh, this is a feature film, like a Hollywood feature film I'm using as my example here. But um, then that's condensed down to the narrative, the film, the final product. And um, it's a very great step and a very important step, as I'm sure I don't have to tell you. But um, I digress, I want to talk about Griffith, and um, I think when you're talking about Griffith, I think the main thing that you have to sort of talk about is um, he popularised and maybe is responsible for what we know as the classic, classical style of film editing, which relies heavily on what is known as the invisible cut. And um, the invisible cut and classical editing is a way it's the process of making the editing seem invisible so it doesn't distract from the telling of a story or anything like that and um, you know there's a 
one of the things I believe is that um, when obviously I'm with other film um, makers and stuff, people ask like, or media students, I guess, they ask, um, "What did you think of the editing?" And you know, the best sort of response you can say to that is, "I didn't notice it at all." You know, if the editing does something or jars or does anything to make you think, "Oh, that was a bad cut," or I'm noticing something here that we've switched scene, I'm noticing something, then the editor hasn't done his job properly because you're meant to be fully absorbed in the film. And sorry, I just hit my mic then, I don't know whether you heard. But yeah, an editor's job is to immerse the audience completely in a film and should remain completely invisible and shouldn't really be um, acknowledged. The invisible cut would be is the idea of hiding cuts within actions and things so that the audience do not notice and the audience don't um, catch on. One of the sort of um, most common f um, uses of it would be to cut mid-action, whether a character is turning or whether they are walking forward or anything like that. You'll see them switch from a wide shot to a mid shot and because the action is so fluent between those shots, you won't really notice it. If I was to relate this to a Call of Duty video, I'd relate it to the, um, sorry, I'm not sure who makes them, I think it's Tuxillion, or, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong there. He makes the Call of Duty transition videos, where um, he switches from one location to another in a variety of different and abstract ways. Um, I'll put a link to that video in the description because in Call of Duty terms that is exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about invisible cuts and um, the sort of notion of um, classical editing and um, it's almost ironic really because in Tuxillian's videos he does them so well that that's exactly what you're paying attention to you're t totally paying attention to the cutting and all that because you know it's it's what the video is about but um you'd notice those sort of things in a normal like dramatic film or just action film or anything i don't know why i said dramatic but you know what i mean these sort of cuts are meant to remain hidden so it doesn't um distract from the film watching and that is when you talk about a griffith style editing or griffith style cutting that's exactly what you're talking about you're talking about um hiding all the cuts and things like that and um you know it's very it's a very unique way of um editing and um there is such thing as being too griffith where um editors will include a lot of stuff that's not needed to make sure that everything is fluent and um very uh you know what's the word i'm looking for there um very precise i guess but um yeah, I mean, when I started editing dramas and that, I discovered that I was very Griffith in my work, and um, I left in a lot of nonsense that wasn't needed and drew out scenes just for the sake of making it flow properly. And um, one of the great learning curves that I made was um, learning how to make make less to mean more. So, less to be more. And, um, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'm out of time, so I've got to end the video there. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Look up um, D.W. Griffith. Look up his film, uh, The Birth of a Nation, which comprises all of this sort of stuff that I'm talking about and is one of the very earliest films where you can see great editing. Um, I'll be back next time. I'll have the third part of this where I'll talk about um, Eisenstein and uh, montage and the meanings behind montage. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, hope you guys have found it educational, if you are into editing, obviously. And I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.